Hello, my name is Ken. I was diagnosed with central retinal vein occlusion in 2002. I'm not a doctor and I have no medical training, so remember to consult your physician without delay when making medical decisions. After being diagnosed with central retinal vein occlusion in one eye, my immediate concern was what's the chance that something like this is going to happen in my other eye? In medical writings, this other eye is usually referred to as the fellow eye. A number of medical studies involving retinal vein occlusion patients discuss the fellow eye. Here are just a couple of examples. In addition to specifying how many patients participated, reports on these studies will often disclose the number of patients who, at the beginning of the study, have had a history of retinal vein occlusion in the fellow eye, or have retinal vein occlusions currently going on in both eyes. When you look at this column, remember that the large medical centers involved in these studies probably have a higher mix of difficult cases, as smaller clinics refer tougher cases to these larger centers. Occasionally, a report will mention the occurrence of a retinal vein occlusion in the fellow eye occurring during the study. Reports like these confirm that this type of trouble in both eyes does occur, but because of the small number of retinal vein occlusions occurring during the follow-up period, estimating the likelihood of developing a retinal vein occlusion in the fellow eye with some level of confidence is difficult. At least two larger studies have attempted to quantify this likelihood. In 1994, Dr. Hare and fellow researchers reported on a large consecutive series of patients with various types of retinal vein occlusions who were seen at the University of Iowa. More than 1,100 patients with all types of retinal vein occlusions were entered into this study, including central, hemicentral, and branch retinal vein occlusions. A little more than half of the study participants were central retinal vein occlusion patients and the median time that these patients were involved in this study was more than two years. The study investigators determined that if an individual had any type of retinal vein occlusion in one eye, the estimated chance of developing any type of retinal vein occlusion in the fellow eye was a little under 8% at two years from the date of the original occlusion. The rate of occurrence of subsequent retinal vein occlusions in the fellow eye appear to be greatest in the first six months after the original occlusion. After that time point, the rate of occurrence was reduced but continued at a steady rate for several more years afterward. This team also presented information on the estimated likelihood of developing the exact same type of retinal vein occlusion in the fellow eye. For example, if non-ischemic central retinal vein occlusion was present in the study eye, there was about a 6.5% chance of developing the exact same type of occlusion, non-ischemic central retinal vein occlusion, in the fellow eye during the first two years after the initial occlusion. But information on the likelihood that this same non-ischemic central retinal vein occlusion eye would have of developing any other type of retinal vein occlusion was not presented. Another study called the Central Vein Occlusion Study considered only central retinal vein occlusion patients. This study was concluded in the early 1990s and involved more than 700 patients, the majority of whom were followed for more than two years. The study investigators estimated that the chance of developing any type of retinal vascular occlusion in the fellow eye was about 1% per year. In other words, the chance of developing a central or branch or hemicentral retinal vein occlusion or any other type of vascular occlusion, including arterial occlusions in the fellow eye, would be about 1% during the first year, or 2% during the first two years, or 3% during the first three years, and so on. Of the vascular occlusions that occurred in the fellow eye during the study follow-up, about half were central retinal vein occlusions. It's entirely possible that the studies discussed in this video may overestimate the likelihood of developing retinal vein occlusions in the fellow eye. Smaller practices and clinics often refer more difficult cases to larger, well-regarded institutions and practices where these types of eye studies are usually carried out. 
Of all the people who get retinal vein occlusions, many of the more difficult cases are referred to the larger institutions, leaving these larger institutions with a disproportionate number of older or sicker or more severe cases, which perhaps leads to a higher rate of occlusion in the fellow eye in studies like these. Population-based studies like the Beaver Dam Eye Study and the Blue Mountains Eye Study where large segments of a general population are followed over a long period of time, appear to show lower rates of retinal vein occlusions in the fellow eye. But the number of participants developing retinal vein occlusions during these studies is small, and the participants developing a retinal vein occlusion in the fellow eye is even smaller, making these rates more prone to anomalies of chance. Nonetheless, these population-based studies hold out at least the possibility that rates of retinal vein occlusion in the fellow eye might be a good bit smaller in the general population than the rates discussed earlier derived from large institutions and medical practices. To sum up, then, although retinal vein occlusions sometimes affect both eyes, the large majority of patients will not have to deal with this type of problem. Knowing that this kind of problem occasionally happens gives us as patients the opportunity to work with our doctors to take steps to eliminate any risk factors we may have for retinal vein occlusion and to start doing more of the common sense things to take better care of ourselves.